Hello everyone, welcome to another video, it is Francesco here. So what we're going to be doing in this video is checking out uh, the concept of day planning inside of Todoist. Now for those who don't know, obviously uh, my sort of go-to uh, experience is Todoist, um, but I use a very strict sort of setup at the moment that I wanted to share with you today. So what I sort of, I sort of am able to do is uh, organize and plan my Todoist based on time. Now, I know a lot of people just use their Todoist as a way to sort of unload tasks and have them sort of, I guess, coordinated reasonably to the event. So I know many people are using the Google two-way integration with the calendar function, which is great. However, this is a sort of way and the, the experience that I have used for the last year and have been very beneficial to me. So as you can see, this is today. My day normally starts at like 7.20, so that's when the working day starts, but this is my sort of, I guess, second half of the day from like 12 onwards, I guess. So as you can see, most things are timestamped. So as, you, as you'll be able to tell, this side gives me a chronological timeline of my tasks. Now this is important because I've basically got what I'm doing over the next five, six hours, right? I can see all of that in a glance, and it's a way for me to see uh, all of the important items. Now, as you can see on my uh, phone here, uh, I've got uh, the same experience, so everything's uh, marked, uh, as you can see, with those uh, times there. And what I plan to do is I, I plan the next day. So I'll be able to have the next day fully planned out. Most of the time, what I have is these markers. So I'll have the red, uh, P1, which will indicate like my energy levels. So for example, this is a high energy level, high, high energy level, high energy level, high energy level, sort of like low energy level. Not saying that I, I don't need energy to run uh, 5k and pick up the shopping, but uh, it's more, this is more intensive, I would say, in terms of uh, needing time. So for example, it's proactive and offline. Um, so this is a sort of visual demonstration of my day and that next day also helps me to keep things and as you can see what I tend to do with my day is sort of have these peaks and troughs so I will start a day very smoothly with tasks that don't take too long because then I build up my momentum and then middle of the day I increase the intensity of the tasks and then I slowly bring them down as best I can uh, in terms of energy levels so this way I'm able to plan my day chronologically uh, in advance. As you can imagine, and I've got several emails on this, and I've been sending people this very same setup recently, you're, obviously your day is going to change a lot, and my day does change a lot. For example, this morning I had um, YouTube in the late afternoon. However, I realized during my lunch break, I did want to do YouTube. So this was my time period. Uh, so for example, 11.55, 11.50, sorry. I could start YouTube, and then I can start other work after lunch. Um, so I'm able to quickly move it around. So if I was able to move it around, what I'd do is I'd put today at, so for example, 11.50 a.m. And what I use, as you can see, it goes red. Uh, this is a good indication for me, like that means overdue in the Todoist world. However, I use that as live. So I use that 11.50 as like, it looks like it's a live uh, recording, if you know what I mean, a live, it's active. It's something that I'm working on. So I'll use that as my thing. If two of them go red, it means that I'm behind. So I'll only use one as my indicator that I'm working on it. Uh, and that way I can like help organize all of my activities, which is great. So as you can see, it's very simple. My sort of to-do list, uh, there's nothing too extravagant uh, about it. Uh, the only other thing I would say is that, uh, of course, when you're sort of doing stuff in your day and you're like, oh, I do need to do this, what I tend to do is I dump most of my stuff inside of Inbox. Now, that's a really good thing for me because I don't necessarily have to like think about that task till I clear that Inbox around about this time of the day, like five o'clock at the end of the day so I can process the items. I just dump everything in there and then like most of the stuff I've got to do is like, delayed for later so I'm able to review it so that's a really good practice that I've been able to have and I still try and push for every day and then try and improve slightly so what I recommend is having the inbox as a way to uh, like delay a task or just dump a task in there so that you've always got it um, 
for later to process. So overall, this system has actually helped me to, I guess, organize my time more efficiently. A couple of notes. I don't really plan above and past two days because some things are pre-organized. I do my best to. So for example, I will put um, the activities themselves will be nestled under these subtasks, which is great. I love the subtask function. However, not all of the activities will be there in a week in advance. So for example, what I have on Mondays is like my content creation day, I guess, quite intensified. Tuesdays I have is my meeting day, which I actually pull a lot of actions out. So I will obviously upload a lot of actions to inbox and to the project folders themselves. So I will put everything in there, for example. However, when I'm um, when I'm like like on Wednesdays and tend to be Wednesdays and Thursdays tend to, and Fridays sometimes tend to be my like day where I get most of my work done uh, in terms of like everyday work because. I intensify and batch most of my content production and meetings into one day. So Mondays will be content, Tuesdays will be meetings. This way I can avoid any distractions when I'm doing the work on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. And I get some really intensified workflows. So that means that uh, I don't necessarily plan my week in advance. I put stamps out. So for example, if, if I just click into, um, I don't know, uh, flash disks, for example, I would have all of these ready, but they necessarily won't have tasks in yet. So they're not populated. So as you can see, uh, some of these two days here are but once I have that Tuesday meeting, I will then be able to add a lot more to that. So I'm able to have stamps that I need to be there and do it, but add the actions in later. So if you're worried about that sort of concept, that's something that I do, I don't actually plan past two days, or oh, three days. So that's the sort of setup I have. If there are stuff for the end of the week, so for example, if I'm like contemplating stuff or like there's a link that I have that I know I'm gonna review at the end of the week and I don't need to add it to inbox, I'm gonna put it in plan. Plan is a way that I do that. So I don't have soon anymore, it's just do read plan. That's a weird concept, but I'm slowly refining this to be even better. And again, like I have the same exact setup on my iPhone and it's actually a very efficient way of doing this. Anyway, guys, I hope that gave you a good overview of how you can use to do this as a day planner. I really recommend this chronological technique and use of subtasks. It's something that I'm continually growing and using uh, and always developing. Now, just another note before we go, I know that a lot of people ask how I do this like bold thing. I just put two uh, like uh, exclamation marks next to the thing in capital letters and have a colon. And then it appears like that. And it's quite a nice way to like define and visually see what I need to do. Obviously, I've got the, the, the project list there, but sometimes it's nice to have something a bit different. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy this feature. If you haven't checked out the e-newsletter yet, we put out weekly e-newsletter with videos like this, uh, exclusive ones, articles, useful apps, and things like that, that I think you'll love straight to your inbox every week. So feel free to sign up in the description below. Anyway, guys, it's a pleasure to have been speaking to you today. I'm looking forward to covering more features with you in the near future. Cheers, guys. Thank you.